And I'm excited about God's word today. We are kicking off a brand new series called Momentum. Come on, everybody shout Momentum. Momentum. Anybody come hungry for God's word? You ready? If you can't tell by now, I'm kind of an athlete and a coach. And I get a little fired up. And so I'm going to need you to help me. Can I get an amen? amen. amen. And when you shout amen, it just simply means so be it in my life. So when something connects with you, you're saying, yep, Jesus, I want that. Not shouting amen because it sounds good, but shouting amen because it means something to me, right? So just shout amen, shout yo, whatever. Let's just believe that God's going to do something today in all of our lives, and we're going to leave here better than we came in. Can I get a good amen all that? So we're kicking off this new momentum series, and here's what I want to preach about. If you're taking notes, we're going to pray, and then we're going to go. I want to preach about this. Anybody ever in your life needed your faith tank full again? Anybody ever felt empty and you needed a little, a little bit more faith? Or maybe you felt like, God, why are you blessing everybody else but me? God, how come you're moving there? But God, I believe in you, Jesus, but my faith tank is low a little bit. And you, you need God to move here and move there. And how many need God to move like three weeks ago? Come on, anybody like <laughs> seven years ago? Come on, somebody. <laughs> Ten years ago. Come on, we can keep going. It's amazing how God doesn't move quite in the timing that we want it, and our faith is impacted. We try to shift and move on our own, but can I encourage you? This is the the title of the message I want to preach on is this. I want to coach you up today to stay on Faith Street. Somebody say, stay on Faith Street. I don't know if you've heard the phrase before, but it was just resonating in my spirit the last couple of weeks getting ready for today. Because here's what I believe. I believe that God is trying to deliver something to you. He's trying to overnight you an answered prayer, but he don't deliver to I Don't Believe Boulevard. He delivers to Faith Street. And so the question is, no matter what is coming against us, are we going to stay on Faith Street and trust that God is still on the throne? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He was a healer and still is a healer. And what happened then can still happen today. Ain't nothing going to rob my faith. Ain't nothing going to rob my joy. I'm going to stay on Faith Street. I'm not going to leave Jesus because he's never left me. Somebody shout, stay on Faith Street. Let's do this thing. Jesus, we love you. Do what you do. Amen. Come on. How many like quick prayers? Here we go. Come on, put your hands together one more time if you're glad for God's word. Here we go, amen. It's going to be good. Come on, how many like quick prayers? Come on, am I right? You ever met that somebody that's trying to get the whole restaurant saved? Like, I'm just trying to eat my burger, bro. Come on, pray quick. If you got your Bibles, turn with me to Romans chapter 4. And then you can put a bookmark in Ecclesiastes 9. I'm going to get there in just a moment. I want to read this because we're kicking off 21 days of prayer. Come on, somebody. Fired up about that. How many love some good prayer? Where you at? We love prayer in January. We do prayer and fasting. And in August, we do prayer and feasting. You can pray and still eat your donut. Come on, somebody. I like August. And so, but we kick off 21 days of prayer. Make sure you don't miss Instagram and Facebook with daily inspirational things. Let's join together. Because how many would agree there's power in prayer? There is power in prayer. Look, look, look what the Bible says about prayer. We'll kind of set up where I want to go because I do believe this. I believe God wants to bring momentum to your faith. But when I spend time with Jesus through prayer, it is the momentum that fills my faith. Are you with me? Uh, Romans 12, 12 says this. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and be faithful in, help me out, prayer. Luke three twenty one says this. I love this. I used to read this scripture all the time for water baptisms, which, by the way, today is Baptism Sunday at every campus. Come on, somebody. Let's go. We love water baptisms here at Hope City. It says this, but I saw something different about prayer when I read it this time. Luke 3, 21 says this. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened. As he, is, as he was praying, heaven was open. How many could use a little bit of heaven in your life? Come on, anybody in the house? With heaven comes joy. With heaven comes peace. With heaven comes healing. But when he prayed, heaven opened up. So if you're taking notes, write this down. When you make room for prayer, heaven makes room for you. You need God to move in your life? How about you spend time with God? You need God to move throughout your day. How about you start your day with Jesus? 
When you make room for prayer, heaven will make room for you. And I don't know about you, but I need some heaven in my life and in certain situations where I need God to move. Anybody need God to move? Come on. You need some momentum in your life. So Jesus, though, what, what, what fed his faith so much and gave him momentum to keep believing was how much he created a, a lifestyle of prayer. Jesus prayed everywhere. It wasn't just a moment of prayer for him. It was a reputation of prayer that he had. Jesus started his ministry with prayer. Throughout his three-year ministry, you saw him multiple times. He went to the mountain to pray. He got up in the morning and he prayed. He went to bed and he prayed. In fact, his last breath on earth, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, is a prayer. He led a prayer lifestyle because the human nature of Jesus, y'all know, yes, Jesus, he's our savior, but the reason why we can connect with him is because he became human and he relates to you and me. Right before the cross, he begged, Lord, please take this suffering away from me if there's any way. But what fed his faith to do the momentum of the mission that he came to earth for was he knew how to pray. And praying fed his soul. Prayer, prayer fed his faith. So a few coaching points. First coaching point I want, I want to help you with today is this. How many would agree with this? Prayer fuels my faith. If you're running empty, it's simple. Pray. Everybody shout pray. 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 But, but we got to understand something about faith. We got to stay on faith street. Keep praying. Keep trusting God. Romans 4, 18 through 21, one of my absolute favorites. This is Abraham later on in his life. And if you're new to church and don't know much about Abraham's story, Abraham believed God for a son. Anybody have a prayer that's yet to be answered? Come on, can we get honest in the house? Anybody? So God, believed, God spoke to him, hey, this is going to happen. But it didn't happen for years until he was later. So here he is at the end of his life. And look at his stance of faith, even though for years, even decades, God has still not answered the prayer he's believing for. He says this in verse 18. If you're there, can I get a yeah? Come on. Verse 18 says this. Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed and so became. Side note, you become what you believe. Come on. Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed, so he became the father of many nations, just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring be, your children. Verse 19, check it out. Without weakening in his faith, this is key, he faced the fact. Underline that in your Bible. Without weakening his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead since he was about 100 years old. Come on. Uh, uh, he's got gray in his head. Come on, somebody. And that Sarah's tomb was also dead. Verse 20. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith, faith and gave glory to God by being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. Come on, that's good news right there, right? It's amazing to me how Abraham, in this moment, the Bible says, even though God hasn't answered everything, I'm going to stay on faith street. Even though God hasn't answered my biggest prayer yet, my number one prayer is I just want a son, God. And Abraham, even though against all hope, in hope, Abraham did not waver and his faith was not weakened. The fact, the Bible says he faced the fact of faith. Can I tell you, friends, I try to teach this to my kids when they're trying to understand faith. As I try to teach them as simply as I can is this, is that there's some days there is sad faith and there is happy faith. There's sometimes there's things in our life that it just don't make sense. And it's like, it's just sad. How many would agree? There's some things we go in our life, we just got to put it in the sad folder. We don't understand it. We don't know why it's happening, but it's just going to go in the sad folder. There's happy faith. And there's sad faith. But no matter what happens, nothing is going to rob my faith and my joy in Jesus. And it says that faith faces the facts. Because i got to tell you right now, guys, we live in a broken world with broken people. You're going to have a bad day. 
You're going to have a bad week. You're going to have a bad year. You're going to have a bad season. But you don't have to fake it till you make it. Have you ever met somebody when they walk into church and you're like, hey, 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 brother, how you doing? Man, I'm too blessed to be stressed. No, you stress, bro. Your eyes are bloodshot red. Stop lying in church. Am I right? Have you ever seen somebody? It's amazing how we feel like we got to walk into church like we got it all together. Can I tell you, that's not the God that I serve, and that's definitely not the heart of this house. God can't work with somebody who thinks they got it together. He can only work with somebody who is broken to help you put it together. You don't have to walk in here like you got it all together. Can I tell you right now, just walk in as you are. Broken, busted, and disgusted. It don't matter what you walk in here with. We're going to carry the heart of Jesus here. We're going to love you right where you are because we believe God's going to get you to where you need to be. You got to face the fact. Sometimes we're praying God for something. It's not that you don't have enough faith. If you remember that somebody's like, have more faith, brother. What, bro, what do you, what you mean? You have no idea how much I've been in my closet weeping and crying my eyes out. I'm believing God for this healing. I'm believing God for a breakthrough in my family. I'm believing God for this to happen. But if it doesn't happen, I'm going to face the fact that it hurts. But that face in the fact is not going to rob my faith in my Jesus. Because what I thought was for me may not be for me. And sometimes when we don't face the fact, it will kill the momentum of believing God for what is best in your life. Are y'all with me? Y'all still love me? Come on. All right. You got to face the fact because we go through seasons in life. We got to make sure. Ecclesiastes 3 says this. It says, God will give you seasons. He said, he'll give you a season to cry. Then he'll give you a season to laugh. But God will literally give you that season. And let me tell you right now, if it's your season to cry, cry, baby cry. Let it out. Because what you don't realize is that the tears of those season is the rain that is going to water the soil for the next thing in the next place God has for you. Some of you miss out on the freedom that God is trying to bring you through your cry. Sometimes, yo, this happened to me before. I'll be driving down the highway, listening to worship music. I'm just like, oh, yeah. I'm in a coffee shop, like studying, I just got worship on, and I'm just like, Ugh. and the barista comes and says, sir, you okay? I'm like, yeah, would you like a free coffee? Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> Favor. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody. With oat milk, hey. And an extra shot, hey. Come on. I'm, I'm sorry. Are you, are, are you following me, though? Like, God will give you a season. And you need to acknowledge that season because there's healing there. And sometimes you'll fall into a season of depression. But then there comes a time where God calls you into the season of laughter and joy. And if you don't shift, that season of depression will turn into a spirit of depression and momentum seizes in your life. And can I tell you right now, the God that I serve says, I came to give you joy abundantly and above all that you could ask or think. So sometimes to stay on Faith Street, we just got to face the fact that this is not a good day. This is not a good moment. My marriage and my family is not at a good place right now. But wherever I'm at, I ain't going to let nothing rob my faith in my Jesus. I'm going to stay on Faith Street and I'm going to keep believing. Can I get a good amen in the house? Are you with me? Second thought is this, when I think about why I need prayer in my life, is prayer reminds me that God's got me. I mean, thankful that God's got you. Come on. God has me. And it reminds me that what I'm believing for, it will happen. It will happen, though. Here's the key, though. At the right time and at the right place. This is where it's hard for us. Do I got any control freaks in the house? Come on, somebody. <laughs> Anybody just, you can't seem find peace? You know, you're just like a roller coaster of worry. Don't look at them. Are you still like, <laughs> they tell you to call people out up in church. <laughs> but we've all been there, right? But it's trusting God to stay on Faith Street at the right time and at the right place that God's going to have his best for us. Here's what it says in Ecclesiastes 9, verse 11. I love this scripture. 
It says, I have observed something else under the sun. The fastest runner doesn't always win the race. The strongest warrior doesn't always win the battle. The wise sometimes go hungry, and the skillful are not necessarily wealthy. And those who have educated don't always lead successful lives. Here's the key. It is all decided by chance, faith. By being in the, help me out church, in the right place at the right time. Right place, right time. I don't know about you, but this scripture encourages me because I'm definitely not the strongest. Come on, anybody? Anybody else on Slim Slow? Come on, anybody else? Okay, right. <laughs> definitely not the strongest, definitely not the fastest, <laughs> the wisest, or the most educated. Some of y'all, you're blessed for straight A's. But where's my family at? My B and C students. Come on, where you at? Wave at a brother. My man. I see it, bro. Come on. Are you with me? Now, I'm not saying I encourage it, but can I tell you, some of y'all, you were, you were blessed to graduate magna cum laude and summa cum laude. And anybody else in the house, though, graduated with, thank you, Lordy. Come on, anybody, where you at? Come on, just wave at a brother. Thank you, Jesus. I just made it. I'm here. I got a degree, and I ain't even using it today. Come on, right? It's like... Praise God. Stay in school, kids. Stay in school. <laughs> it's so true, though. Here's what I have learned. This scripture shows me you can have everything, but God still controls the time and the place of favor in your life. <laughs> Working hard gives you success. God brings favor with miracles. You're believing God with something, but here's what I have learned. I have learned that I'm believing God for something, but I got to make sure that I be the right one for the right time. Because God is more interested in my character than my comfort. And I got to make sure I'm the right one for the right time. Am I living a life of purity? Am I living a life of holiness? Am I living a life centered around Jesus? Because can I tell you right now, friends, holiness does not follow happiness. Happiness follows holiness. You got some sin in your life trying to take you out. The enemy tries to disguise it. It's all good. You're living 98%, 99% for God. But that one thing, you good. You come by grace. You all right. But it's that one thing that will take you down. If I put all of y'all on a boat in Galveston, a huge yacht, and said, we're going to party, it's free food, we're going to have a blast, it's going to be amazing. And as we leave, I said, guys, there's only one thing, there's only one hole in the boat. <laughs> How many of y'all will lose your faith real quick? Come on, am I right? <laughs> you won't want to go no more. It's amazing how the enemy will make us think that 99% with Jesus is still with Jesus. Sin will get you tripped up. Sin is like getting hustled. You think you got a deal, but the deal actually got you. And all of a sudden, you let the enemy try to trip you up. And I'm sitting there to tell you, you need to stay on faith street because I want to make sure that when God brings what I'm believing for at the right time, at the right place, I'm going to be the right one so I can walk in the favor that he is bringing me. So I'm going to shout, stay on faith street. Stay on faith street. When I think about seasons and I think about just trusting God at the right time and at the right place, I think about... Um, this time, my wife and I, we have moved in the last 12 years. We have moved seven times here in Houston. And so I, I got a moving business. Come on, if anybody needs help, right? <laughs> got to figure it out. But um, I'll never forget our first house. We were so excited. We were like, we got to get a house. We would not get a home without a fireplace. Come on, how many like a good fire pit? Come on, anybody in the house? Let's go. Now we were so excited. We were like, the first night we're going to move in, we making a fire. Here's the problem. We moved in in the middle of July in Houston. <laughs> Are you with me? How many already know? Yeah, it's hot. But I was determined. We moved in that first night like, we going we to make a fire. So I ran up to the Target and, and Kroger and Target, and we went up to different places. And I, ran, I was asking them, for, hey, y'all got any firewood? They looked at me like I was crazy. But I went to the third target. How many know the Lord comes in the midnight hour, <laughs> right? So it's like the Lord had me some wood and we came in. We cranked the AC down to like 55 degrees. Little Kenny G, little Earth shirt. And man, good night. I'll never forget. I'll never forget though. 
Isn't it funny how God will speak to you in moments like that? Here we are, built a fire in the middle of summer, in the heat of summer, in our house. Crank the AC down to 55 degrees, and I'll never forget the Lord told me this. Brandon, why are you trying to force a season that doesn't fit the reality of the season you're living in? Anybody ever a God just slap you? Are you with me? And I thought to myself, okay, God, you're right. I don't fully trust you where you have me. Am I going to trust you on where you're taking me? Why am I trying to force a reality? So many of you, we do, many of us, we've all been there before to where we determine our faith and our hope and our relationship with Jesus when he answers all of our prayers. God, if you can get me there, then I'll be faithful to you. But God is saying, no, I got you here for a reason. And I don't want to take you there and you lose it. Maybe you're not ready yet. So I want to make sure you're the right one where you are. I know it's not where you want to be, but I promise you at the right time and at the right place, if you stay on Faith Street, I'll get you to where you want to go. But I got to get you here to get ready so that when I bring it, you can hold on to it and you can keep it. So you got to stay on Faith Street. Nothing is going to rob my faith. God is always working. I want to share an illustration with you real quick before we begin to close. And my thought on this is Pastor Daniel actually preached an incredible message a few weeks ago. If you didn't listen to it, make sure you go back and you hear it. He preached a message on momentum in the middle. Absolutely powerful message. And here's what I want, I want to coach you with here today is that, is that prayer keeps, keeps us grounded. How I many know when you're grounded in your roots or in Jesus, it gives your faith momentum to keep believing. And I believe we have momentum in the middle. In fact, I believe that God created us to be born for the middle. We want to be at certain places, but God created us to be born for the middle. Everybody say born for the middle. I got a couple of guys who are going to come help me out here today. Y'all show them some love. Come on. Yeah. Y'all looking good. Looking real good. They on our... Uh, weightlifting team here at Hope City. <laughs> and so, yeah, oh yeah, come on, strong, yeah, flat, yeah, hey, all right, come on. It's good. These guys are amazing, they're gonna help me. I hope this illustration is gonna maybe put some perspective in your heart to trust God where you are. Because how many get stressed out about needing God to move? Come on, anybody? Can we get honest in church? God, I need you too, and I'm stressed out. When you, when, you, when it won't happen, Jesus? When's it gonna happen, bro? Is it gonna happen today? Is it gonna happen tomorrow? Jesus, come on, is it this week? Come on, it's Monday. Let's go. Church is good Sunday. <laughs> hey, we're gonna be. We're gonna, it's, we, we, and we get stressed out, and it builds up. Can I tell you this? Here's what it. Here's what this means. This means right here. This is your future. This is God. All the prayers that you have. This is God answering everything that is in your heart. This is good. This is beautiful. This is ugly. This is painful. I love you, bro. This is everything you don't want to be. This represents your past. This represents your pain. This represents everything that God has brought you through. And can I tell you right now, here's what you got to understand, is that God will always allow two gaps to always be in your life. God will never, a gap here and a gap here. God will never really bring you all the way here, but also never leave you. You weren't born to stay here. So if you weren't born to live here, and you weren't born to stay back here, you were born for the... So God will always allow two gaps to stay in your life. A gap of thankfulness and a gap of faithfulness. Meaning this... God, how many believe God is a good God? Yeah. Try that again. Come on, how many believe God is a good God? Yeah. But here's something you got to understand about God. God is never going to answer all your prayers at once. Because if he did, you wouldn't need faith. And some of us get so mad at God saying, God, how come you haven't come through? 
God, man, if you can just answer this prayer, answer this prayer, then I'll follow you to church. Then I'll be faithful with you. Then I'll believe that you are a real God. But God is never going to answer all your prayers all at once because then you will never leave him. There will always be something that you are believing God for to keep you faithful. But then God is a good God. He's not going to leave you in your past through his grace and his love. He's not going to let you stay in your brokenness. So if God's not, he's a good God, he's never going to leave you here, but he's never going to bring you there. Then he's going to leave you in the middle because sometimes we're going to go through things in life and you're believing God for something, but you got to allow your thankfulness to feed your faithfulness. Are you catching this? I'm not going to be mad at God anymore because he hasn't answered my prayer. But God is a good God. He's done miracle after miracle after miracle. And because he did it here, I know that he's going to do it there. The reason why David had the strength to defeat a Goliath is because God delivered him from a lion and God delivered him from a bear. And I know you're not where you want to be, but thank you, Jesus. You're not where you used to be, but I'm believing God. Come on, Hope City. Are you with me? I'm believing God for this, but I know it's going to happen because God delivered me from this. So I'm going to stay on Faith Street. I'm going to keep believing. God, I'm believing for a miracle in my marriage. God, I believe it's going to happen, but I know you're going to do it because five years ago you gave us a breakthrough and if you did it then you can definitely do it now I'm believing God to set me free from addiction again I know you can do it because you did it 10 years ago then in Jesus name you're going to set me free I'm dealing with cancer again I need healing in my body but I know you're going to do it because you did it before and you'll do it again so I'm going to stay I'm going to stay on faith street I'm going to keep believing. I'm going to keep shouting. Ain't nothing going to rob my joy. Ain't nothing going to rob my faith. So I'm going to shout, stay on Faith Street. Y'all stand to your feet as we close. Give these guys a hand. Come on, thank you. One more time, somebody shout, stay on Faith Street. I can tell you right now, what if we stayed? Y'all got me preaching, losing my voice. Let's go. Love it. Fourth quarter, baby. One minute on the clock. Don't leave. I hope that helps somebody. Yeah. That whenever you believe in God for something to stay faithful, let your thankfulness feed your faithfulness. This guy's going to do it. He's going to do it. With a show of hands, has God come through for you before? Come on, anything. Is anybody? Look, look around the room. Just take a second. Keep your hand up. Look around the room. This is why we got family. And when we were believing for something, what if we just carried that spirit when we walked around Hope City today? And every week, hey, you start, hey man, stay on Faith Street. You got this thing. Keep your faith alive. God's got your marriage. God's got your family. A breakthrough is going to come your way. That investment is going to break through. Finances are going to happen. Bills are going to be paid. Healing is going to take place. Don't you dare get off Faith Street. You better stay on Faith Street. I don't know. We need a t-shirt. Somebody get a tattoo. Do something. But let's carry the spirit of faith up in this house, believing that God ain't done with us, and God is going to keep working through us. Amen? Stay on Faith Street. I want to finish with this thought and a personal story. Is that I know, I know we've been raising our hand a lot, but how many have a need in the house right now? Come on, anybody have a prayer in a need? Every campus. Look around the room, we ain't alone. In this thing together as family. Here's what I have learned about God. I've lived long enough, a saved life, that whatever I'm believing for, sooner or later I realize that he's already on the way. He's already working. He's already moving. Think about God revealed this to me in a moment with my family, my wife, Kristen, our son. We were so excited about a boy. And I'll never forget the day that she just woke up in severe pain. And she was just ready to, it's like, we got to get to the hospital. By the way, do I get any dads that broke laws on the way to the hospital? Come on, anybody like... Thank you. Thanks for letting me not be alone. Come on. Thank you. Thank you. Some of y'all scared. You lined up in church. Come on. Scared to raise your hand. But, but are, you, are, you, are you with me? Like, I'll never forget that moment. So we rushed to the hospital and the nurses are like, hey, Brandon, it's happening. Let everybody know. 
So I'm, I'm there texting people like, it's not happening, let's go. Like, boy, all caps, 10,000 exclamation points, you know, because people are serious on Facebook when they post in all caps. Y'all know that? I'm like, it's happening, it's a boy, it's a boy. And all of a sudden, I look up, and I think my wife said my name. I look up, and my wife passes out, and 10 nurses surround her, unplug her, rush her out of the room, and I'm all alone, have no idea what's happening. Then I had a nurse come up to me, bless her heart. She gave me the news. She said, Sir, Mr. Barber, I just want you to know that your wife is bleeding internally and your son is not breathing. I can't promise you that either one of them are going to make it. I'll never forget that moment. If out of all the faith in the world, I feel like nothing could help me in that moment. It was just painful. I'll never believe, I'll never forget two things happened though. Forgive me. Two things happened. I'll never forget. One, can I tell you, this is the beauty of family and having a connect group. What I did not know, I didn't know who else to call, so I literally, I text my connect group and I had no idea. We had a friend of ours, a friend of ours who was an on-call nurse and she happened to be called in that day. I didn't know this till days later but she got the word and she was three stories down directly below us, praying in the Holy Ghost, believing God for healing, believing God for breakthrough. Come on, somebody. How many know with Jesus and friends, it changes everything? I've never believed that. This is why we, you, I know you feel like we're a broken record all the time. Get in the connect group, jump on the team and serve, go to Girl Track, do all that. We don't do it just because we want you to help us work. We're doing it because when that day and moment happens to you, it's the greatest strength you'll ever find. Jesus and friends. Then I'll never forget this. Obviously, my wife and my son is good. My beautiful wife is here with me today and bacon and chicken nuggets is getting saved over there. So they're good. Let me tell you how cool God is. We walked into the hallway and my dad actually got into the hallway. My parents immediately rushed to the hospital. And my dad, I think dads just have kind of like a Jedi sense. They can break through things. I don't know how he got through security to get there. But he got there and he was actually talking to the doctor who just saved my wife and my son. And the doctor happened to remember him, remember him from playing for the Oilers and then remember him through our prison ministry. And he's a believer. He loves Jesus. The doctor, I'll never forget, he said, Brandon, hey, can I tell you something not to scare you, but tell you something to let you know how good God is? He said, he said, I was lit. He said, Brandon, I'm the only doctor on the floor today. The only one. He said, I left my office to go walking to check on another patient. And literally, they swung the door open of the emergency room, the surgery room, to come called me. Literally, I happened to be walking by. They grabbed me, pulled me into the room. And Brandon, I just want you to know that my office is over 10 minutes away. If I not had been in that place at that time, you would not have your son. You would not have your wife today. I don't know if anybody sees where I'm going, but before I even knew that I needed an answer, God had an answer already on the way. Oh, come on, Hope City. Come on, I don't know if I just need to stir some people's faith today, but let me tell you right now, I don't know what you're believing for, but you're gonna realize someday if you stay on Faith Street, God's got an answer already on the way. He's gonna heal your marriage. He's gonna heal your family. He's gonna touch your life. Things will forever change. This is why I don't lose faith in my Jesus, because he's already moving, he's already working, and I'm gonna stay on Faith Street. I'm not gonna give up on him, because he has never given up on me. Come on with a shout of praise, Home City. Give Jesus all the praise he deserves. Give him your faith, give him your joy. Somebody shout Jesus. Shout Jesus. Jesus. All right, let's land this plane. Come on, son. how many glad you came to church? Somebody shout, stay on Faith Street. Let's go. 
I'm gonna close, I promise. Every pastor has at least three or four closings. <laughs> pastor Daniel has 17, but just kidding, I love him. Can I tell you this? This is the heart of our church. Everything that I said, how many believe is for you? Come on, anybody? Okay, every campus leaning in and every person here, you just raise your hand and say, yes, I believe that's all for me. But can I tell you where it all happens? It all happens with the relationship with Jesus. You want all of this? It's about a relationship with Jesus. Jesus didn't die on the cross to be a part of your top three. He died to be number one in your life. A real man is a man of God who loves Jesus and leads his family to church. A real woman is a woman of God full of Jesus and the Holy Ghost and leads their family to church. Can I tell you right now, I don't know who I'm speaking, but Jesus needs to be the center of your world. Maybe you're here today. He needs to be number one in your life for the first time. You've never really given it a shot. What if we change that today? Maybe you need to rededicate your life. Say, I'm not what I used to be, but I remember what it was. And I want to get back to that. Every head bowed and every eye closed. On the count of three, I'm going to ask you to shoot your hand up. If you're even watching online, there's a way for you to respond or you can just type Jesus in the chat. Let us know we're talking to you. But if you're in the room, honestly, it doesn't matter who you came here with. It doesn't matter who's to the right or who's to the left of you. This is you and only you can get you to heaven. I'm going to ask you on the count of three to shoot your hands up with boldness. We can stand and shout at a sporting event. People go crazy, paint their bodies. They're just fearless over a ball. How much more should we be faithful and be bold about our Jesus. So in a moment here on the count of three, I'm gonna ask you to throw your hand up saying, talking to me, Brandon, I need Jesus for the first time or I need to rededicate my life. Hands are actually already going up at every location. One, two, three, shoot them up and keep them up. Saying, I need Jesus, come on. Just keep it up so I can see you. I see you, dear friend. I see you, thank you so much. I see you, my man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I see you back there. Church family, everybody lift your hands together. Come on, let's join this family. Come on, everybody shout this prayer at the top of your lungs. Everybody shout, Jesus. Come on, shout it loud. Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. Jesus, take away my sins. Wash my sins clean. Today, Jesus, shout it louder. Say, today, Jesus, I give you my life. You're my God. You can have my heart. And from this day forward, I'm going to give you everything of me. In Jesus' name, keep your hands up. I just want to pray for everybody. Father, I thank you for every single person in the room. I pray right now in Jesus' name that I don't know what it is they're going through or whatever it is they're believing God for. But I pray right now, Lord, you're going to help them stay on faith street. There's a healing they're believing for. There's a breakthrough that I pray they don't give up on their marriage. They don't give up on their family. They don't give up on their education. They don't give up on the dream of that business or that investment that is in their heart. God, in Jesus' name, they don't give up on themselves. Whatever it is they're believing for, God, we're going to have faith together that you're a good God.